Hello everyone, my name is Dimitri and welcome to Primary Arms. Today we'll be discussing a gun sighting technique called co-witnessing. Co-witnessing allows us to use our red dot sight and our iron sight in case the red dot fails or simply runs out of batteries. Co-witnessing is a sight setup that allows us to use our red dot sight and while looking through it, still be able to see our iron sights. This allows for the fast acquisition and low light advantages of a red dot and still be able to use the iron sights in case the red dot sight fails or runs out of batteries. There are two different forms of co-witnessing, absolute and lower one-third. We will be covering both, explaining the differences between the two and what their advantages and disadvantages are. We have color-coded all three sights to help you better understand your sight picture or what you should be seeing while aiming the rifle. Here's an absolute co-witnessing sight picture or what you would see while aiming. First, let's look at it with the red dot turned off. The irons line up in the center of the sight window. That is what absolute co-witnessing means. Now let's turn on the red dot. In this example, the irons and the red dot had zeroed in at the same range. Our rear sight in blue, our front sight in green, and our red dot sitting on top of the green front sight post. Notice how everything lines up in the center of the red dot sight window. The advantage of an absolute co-witness is that if the red dot fails, you can transfer to your iron sights without having to move your head off the rifle or cheek weld. Everything lines up in the center of the red dot sight window. The disadvantages to an absolute co-witness become apparent while using a small red dot sight. Because the iron sights are in the center of the red dot sight window, they tend to hide secondary threats or targets. This can be avoided by using a rear pop-up sight, but requires you to take your hand off the rifle in order to flip it up. Again, let's first look at the red dot turned off. Notice how the iron sights sit on the lower one-third of the red dot sight window and not in the center as covered in absolute co-witnessing. In this co-witnessing setup, we have the front sight in green and rear sight in blue. If the irons and the red dot are zeroed at the same range, the red dot sits on top of the green front sight post. Notice how the irons sit on the lower one-third of the red dot sight window and not in the center is covered in absolute co-witnessing. The advantage to this type of setup is that you can tilt your head and center just the red dot in the middle of the red dot sight window. This will remove your iron sights out of the way, sitting a little lower, allowing you to see secondary threats or targets. The disadvantages to this is that if the red dot fails and you have to transition back to your iron sights, you must shift your face off the cheek weld. On both absolute and lower one-third, we recommend zeroing your iron sights and your red dot individually. With either setup, be sure to keep both eyes open scanning for threats. The way you will set them up will depend on your rifle, mounts, sights, and personal preference. Make sure to practice and above all be safe. My name is Dimitri with Primary Arms saying so long and be sure to tune in for future videos.